I'm going to talk about sacrificing today, and I'll approach it from the realm of parenting, which is a place where a lot of people claim they sacrifice and work. So let me begin with parenting. You know, I, at the School for the Work of Byron Katie, I was introduced for the first time to the idea that maybe there's no such thing as sacrifice. And Katie's really big on pointing out that whatever you do, it, it's really all for you, always. So I, I gave that a lot of thought in the realm of parenting. And as I explored my own concepts of sacrifice in my parenting, or ideas that my parents had sacrificed for me, I then started to notice how often other parents spoke in those terms, even when they actually feel pretty good about what they're doing. But I, but I also noticed that if you frame it in terms of sacrifice, there's automatically something depleting that happens. You're automatically speaking in terms of something being harmed or, or killed even, or shut down for the sake of something else, and that, you know, it's a very good choice. So let me just invite you to be 100% in choice instead. You know, forget sacrifice and just go for, well, I'm choosing this because it's my preferred choice. Because of these two things, I'd rather put my resources here. I would rather pay for my kid to have ski club this year than pay for myself to have whatever, renewed wardrobe or get my house repainted or whatever actually matches ski club. Um, so why is this not sacrifice if you're choosing to give to your kid instead of to yourself? Because when I choose to give something to my kid, it's because that makes me happy. It's because that makes me feel good as a parent. It's because that puts me being the kind of parent I value being and I want to be. It's because I get joy seeing him thrive somewhere, build self-esteem somewhere, hone skills somewhere that I'd rather not have him just start building at 18 when he goes off to seek his fortune on his own. So uh, let's talk about the realm of work because I have a client who just wrote me to speak about a pattern she noticed where she's either sort of sacrificing in her work life, kind of working too much at the expense of her own health and well-being, or noticing that she's reached that point of exhaustion or illness or symptoms coming up again. And then she slacks off for a while, gives herself permission not to work, feels better, and starts to go into crisis financially until she goes back into the other end of the cycle and starts to work too hard from a position of sacrifice. So, you know, I think that part of the problem is having a sacrifice model or mentality or worldview in place. So, you know, I would urge you to look at where did you learn a sacrifice as a laudable thing, as, as a good way of being? You know, did you learn it from Bible stories if you came from that tradition? Or did you learn it because of how your parents spoke? Or did they even tell you directly that they sacrificed for you? And did they point to how hard they worked? Or did they have jobs they hated? so that you learned, okay, okay, to be a good person, to get my needs met and to take care of those I'm responsible to care for, I must sacrifice. And by the way, one of the ones you're always responsible to care for, the only one you're really inherently forever responsible to care for is yourself. So when you're sacrificing at your own expense, uh, you're actually violating something that you're in charge of. And it's not laudable, it's not a good ethic, it's not, there's nothing spiritual about it. So I invite you to locate where your sacrifice paradigms came from. I also invite you to look for other solutions. There's never an either or. It's never either sacrifice my health and well-being or have my needs met. So there's got to be a place where the universe would invite you to go. And hint, it's going to be a place you want to go. It's going to be a place that feels good to you. Where you can get both your financial needs met and have your well-being uh, completely honored, completely taken care of, completely met. So I invite you to go on a quest for that and believe that life wants to show it to you. And when you catch yourself believing in sacrifice, you know, question that thought. Uh, notice where you're in choice. Perhaps you're still choosing to work too hard because right now it's the best option you see. And then invite yourself to see other options. 
one of my favorite people to talk about is Abraham. And Abraham does say, and I just love this, that within reach there are always 50 ways to manifest the thing that you want. 50 ways, 50 forms of what you're after are within reach right now. So brainstorm, invite people to help you who know about the work realm that you're in or that you'd like to get into. Uh, clear your thoughts, use the work of Byron Katie, get a coach to help you. And uh, whatever you can do to scooch toward total well-being that involves zero sacrifice and where you can stand in choice, which is a powerful place to be, I invite you to go there.